Hello everyone, in this video I'll be going over all the aircraft controls in War Thunder. I will not be going into super deep explanation of every single control, as some of them are simple enough that they don't need much explanation, or they are just so specific that you won't ever need to use them. You'll see that at the bottom when we reach the engine controls section. For the sake of this video, I will assume you are using a HOTUS in VR, but I will still touch on mouse and keyboard stuff as well. Starting at the top, we have the four major control schemes. These schemes dictate what controls and options you have access to for setting up your controls. The first one is mouse aim. This sets up your controls just for using your mouse and keyboard to control the plane. Unless you want to do something special, this is the main scheme most players will use. After that is simplified. I won't go through all four of these for the sake of time, but the main takeaway is that each one gives you more and more control over the aircraft until you get to the point where you are using full real controls. For prop planes on HOTUS, realistic is the best to use as you get auto trim. For the more complex controls for jets, uh -huh, you want to use full real as it gives you access to some of the more complex controls. Example being SAS, Stability Augmentation System, but it does require you to slightly trim the aircraft. Moving on to the Controls Mode section, it starts out with the Controls Mode drop-down. This will dictate your main way of controlling the aircraft. Depending on what you choose, it may change your control scheme. Uh, mouse aim can only be used on mouse aim. Mouse joystick is a virtual joystick for people who don't have a HOTUS. It's just so mouse players can still have access to the other three schemes. But if you are using a HOTUS, you will want to use relative control for your control mode. Otherwise, it won't work. Virtual instructor is only for mouse aim and simplified controls as it all it does is limit stuff like your angle of attack and control surface deflection. Auto trim is exactly what it says. It auto trims your aircraft so you don't have to do it yourself. This is only turned off in full real controls. Toggle control mode just gives you a hotkey to change the control mode. On to the movement category. Mouse wheel aircraft. All this does is lets you bind specific items to your mouse wheel. You only get three options. I personally don't use anything here, but I feel but feel free to bind one of the drop down options, but it's mostly for mouse and keyboard players. Mouse wheel multiplier is just for the value curve for the option above when operating the mouse wheel. Throttle axis is just for what buttons or HOTUS axis you want to bind the throttle to. The item you see bound here is the throttle axis for my HOTAS throttle handle. Hold throttle for WEP. Turn this off if you are using a HOTUS. This feature is for if you are using keyboard for your throttle. You can hold down your increase throttle button and it will give you WEP. Otherwise it doesn't work and just glitches in and out of WEP when turned off. It changes the last sliver of your throttle axis to WEP. Roll, pitch, and yaw axis plus their sensitivities. These are pretty simple. Just set these to your HOTUS flight stick. In, uh, in case you are new to aircraft, roll will make your plane roll to the left or right. Pitch will make your plane point up or down, and yaw makes your plane drift left or right. Thrust vector and hover height are for aircraft with VTOL and or thrust vectoring abilities. I don't have any aircraft like that, so I don't have these bound, uh, but they would let you bind your thrust vectoring to a control axis, as well as your hover height when in hover mode uh, of a VTOL aircraft. Invert Y-axis aircraft is literally just what it says. It, it inverts your pitch axis. Force feedback. It's pretty simple and only applies to equipment that offers force feedback features. 
Ignite Boosters is only for the ME262C-1A. It has rocket boosters on the back of its engines, and that button ignites them. I believe that is the only aircraft that uses that button. Wing Sweep. Adjust the sweep of your wings on variable sweep wings. You can extend or close them. I recommend setting this to something like your scroll wheel or set it to a set of buttons that you aren't using. Below is the wing sweep control mode button. This changes your wing sweep from auto to semi-auto. Auto will sweep your wings depending on your speed, while semi-auto will try to sweep your wings uh, to what you set. Example, if you are going Mach 1 and you tell it to extend your wings in semi-auto mode, it won't do it. But if you slow down enough, it will then extend them, but it won't sweep them back in once it reaches the sweep you want. You can use toggle flaps, though if you wait for a second, I'll explain why I don't bother with that button. Flaps down and flaps up. I have set this to two separate buttons so I can quickly lower and raise them in combat. If you try to use the toggle button, then you are spending time and airspeed to lower and raise the flaps all the way. Just makes things much faster to have them separated. Thrust reversal. Uh, this reverses the thrust of the jet to help it stop faster. It's usually for shorter runways and whatnot. The only jets I know of that use this are the SK-60 and should be all the Tornado variants. Toggle Gear is pretty self-explanatory, but you'll see I have it bound to two separate buttons. That is because I use a HOTAS. My HOTAS has a switch for the landing gear that goes up and down. Since War Thunder doesn't have gear up and down, I just bound both the up and down on my switch to the gear. Makes it easier for me. Left and right brake. Those are the wheel brakes for the left and right wheels. For me, I have that bound to the left and right brake axis on my flight pedals. Drag chute is the literal parachute that comes out of the back of most Cold War jets when landing. It can only be deployed on the ground under a certain speed. Of the vehicles that I own and know have a chute, deployment speeds are as listed. MiG-23 is 140 knots or 260 kilometers per hour, 160 miles per hour, and 72 meters per second. The F4S is 150 knots, 277 kilometers per hour, 172 miles per hour, and 77 meters per second. The F4E and the F4C is 160 knots, 296 kilometers per hour, 184 miles per hour, or 82 meters per second. The F5V is 175 knots, 324 kilometers per hour, 201 miles per hour, or 90 meters per second. The F104 is 160 knots, 296 kilometers per hour, 184 miles per hour, or 82 meters per second. That's obviously not all the ones that have chutes, but you get the idea from some testing. Starting with small and large caliber guns. This button will fire your small and large guns like machine guns and cannons on your aircraft. Additional guns is for stuff like gun pods and things that attach to your wings and belly. Uh, fire machine guns slash cannons. This is a unique binding. I don't have the ability to make sure it works as intended, but what it does is if you have something like a console controller where the left and right triggers are considered axes and not a button, then you can half pull for small caliber guns and full pull for cannons. Kind of neat, but not something you'd really use on PC. Fire primary weapons. 
It's not explained up here, but you have the option to select your primary weapon. If you don't bind your weapons up here, then you would have to select your primary weapon, then use this button to fire it. I took the safe path and just bound it to my primary weapon button. Fire secondary weapons. This is a really important one. Bind it to whatever button you plan to fire missiles, rockets, and bombs with. This so this weird ID open visual weapon selector. This is a new feature they added to the game last update, not fighting dragons, the one before it. Uh, press this and a menu like this will appear. From here you can choose what secondary weapon that is on your aircraft you want to select to use while in mission. Jettison secondary weapon. It just lets you drop whatever secondary weapons you have selected. So if you want to dogfight but still have bombs, then just select your bombs, press this button, and move on. These next few options from open bomb bay door to fire rocket salvo aren't really needed if you aren't doing bombing, but I'll brush over them real quick for you all. The first one just opens the doors of your bomb bay. The second one will drop your bombs. This is to separate your bombs from your secondary weapons button, but it clutters up the controls for me so I don't use it. The third one will drop a bomb series. Basically this button will drop like one to all of your bombs per button push, depending on how many bombs you choose in the options menu. I will cover the stuff in the options menu, but that will be its own video. Fire Rocket and Rocket Salvo do the exact same thing as the bomb options above. The only difference is that the Salvo is a set amount of rockets, 16 I think. Okay, it gets a bit crazy after this point, so strap in and hold on tight. Okay, here we go. Fire air to ground missile, fire air to air missile, drop guided bombs. You do not have to bind these to a button. They are all secondary weapons and as such are fired by your secondary weapon button when they are select selected as your active secondary weapon. But I bind them to my secondary weapon button anyways. This ensures that they are all fired when I want to fire them, but feel free to experiment with it. Drop additional fuel tank. This button will drop your additional fuel tanks one by one until they are all dropped. It will only drop one tank per button push. Weapon lock air to air, weapon lock air to ground, and lock guided bombs. Bind these to all the same button. You don't have to, but it will make your life much easier if you do. Without this button, your missiles won't lock, your bombs won't lock, your air to ground missiles won't lock. Yes, your weapons seeker turns on when you press the fire button, but this gives you complete control on when and how you want to fire. Uh, you don't have to be constantly double pressing the fire button. It also lets you turn off the seeker as well. Exit selected weapon mode and switch primary weapons. These are very worthless. The first one just turns off your weapon selection and resets it to default. The second one just cycles through your primary weapons. No reason to mess with these. The next one, however, switch secondary weapons, is vitally important. Bind this to a button you can access really easily. This is what you will use to swap between all of your missiles and bombs. It's the non-visual version of the visual weapon selector I touched earlier. Secondary weapon ripple quantity. This sets how many of your secondary weapons you fire off with one button press. It does not work on air-to-air -air missiles or air-to-ground missiles, but it does work on unguided rockets, guided bombs, and unguided bombs. Its settings are 2, 4, 8, 16, and continuous. Toggle Bombs Auto Release This is a newer one for me, but basically when using a Lightning 2 pod,
you can laser a target, then press this, and the bombing computer will auto-release the bombs once you get into the optimal dropping envelope. Switch shooting cycle countermeasures. This button lets you fire only flare, chaff, and mixed. Instead of each one having its own button, you can swap between, between them with this. Next up is switch IRCM on off. This is only found in jets like the Su-39 and the Su-25 variants. Basically, it just prevents IR missiles from locking onto you from the rear. Then you have the fire countermeasures. This is the button that will fire countermeasures like flares and chaff. By default, it fires both uh, of them at once. Below that, we have the option to bind separate buttons to just flare or chaff. Uh, these buttons will fire only flare or chaff. Periodic countermeasures release on off. This is attached to something in the options category. I will put a picture on screen what this button does. It activates your countermeasure series. It will continue to drop countermeasures until you press the button again. Countermeasures slaving to MAW. A MAW is a warning system that some jets have that can detect missiles. This button just slaves your countermeasures to the MAW so it will auto dump flares and chaff when it thinks a missile is coming at you. Yaw and pitch access for aimed weapons. This is for missiles and stuff that lets you control the flight path of the missile. I don't know what missiles have this ability, but that's what those controls do. Toggle laser designator. I don't use this button. The laser comes on when you press the lock button for your guided bombs and air to air and air to ground rockets, but this would let you toggle it on and off. Now, on to the big boys. Switch radar slash IRST search on off. This button turns your radar and IR search radar on and off. Switch between radar and IRST. This swaps between your radar and infrared search mode. I have unbound this for now as the button I had this on got me killed more than once. You can't fire radar missiles while in infrared mode. Change radar slash IRST mode. This will change your radar from SRC to TWS, SRC PD, and such. For the sake of the video's length, I won't go into radar stuff. I know these terms may not make sense to a new player trying to set up a new premium jet they just bought. So if you guys want a video talking about just radar stuff, then just let me know in the comments section. Radar IRST Beyond slash Within Visual Range Combat. This button will swap between your normal radar mode and ACM. ACM is basically your dogfighting radar mode. It will also swap to HUD mounted display mode if you have access to that. So this button will take you from SRC to ACM and then to HMD if you have access to it. Then it brings you back to your normal search mode. I'm sorry if I'm going a little fast here, uh, but there is a lot of information here and this video is already pretty long. Change radar IRST search mode. This will change the search pattern of your radar. This shrinks, enlarges, and changes the shape of your radar search cone. This is nice for situations where you think you know where someone is, so you can shrink your search cone to a small area. That way your radar refreshes its search much faster. Uh, that is the simple way of putting it, but moving on. Change radar slash IRST search scale. This changes the distance at which your radar searches out to. The power of your radar depends on its max sight range, but that is what this button does. Select radar IRST target to lock. Okay, this is not exactly what it sounds like, while also being exactly what it means. Um, okay, 
I have some footage on screen that shows what this button does. It swaps through targets on the TWS radar mode. That is the most simple way of putting it. Lock radar slash IRST on target. Okay, this is your lock button. This is the button you push to lock a target on your radar. The next three controls are radar tilt controls. Do with those what you want. It lets you tilt the radar dish up, down, left, and right. I'm not going to attempt to pronounce this next one. It's translated as strange music, but basically it's the back mounted cannons on like one German plane that has cannons on its back that point straight up. This button is for that. A whole button to swap to that cannon. Reload guns is for arcade, so you can reload on command rather than when you run out of ammo. Toggle cannon and ballistic computer. These are a bit pointless, as when you swap to weapons in a jet, it automatically switches the sight over to the weapon you select as your secondary weapon. Now maybe it doesn't do that in third person for mouse and keyboard, but for VR, it always automatically changes the cockpit sight for my selected weapon. Oh, and whatever you have, or whenever you have air-to-air -air missiles selected, it swaps to the cannon computer. That's just the default cockpit site for me. Like I said, I don't know if it's different for non-cockpit users. Switch site mode and cockpit. This is just the same thing, but specifically for the cockpit. Uh, and it will switch regardless of whatever secondary weapon you have selected. So for switching the mission bombing target, this is a bomber thing where you can highlight one of the four bases in an air battle as a bombing target. That way you can press your auto release and it will drop the selected amount of bombs once you get in range. Activate and deactivate target point. These are a more specific version of the mission bombing target as it will select wherever you are pointing as the target location so you can select a point then deselect it. Next up is site stabilization. What this does is if you are using a lightning 2 laser pod or TV guided bombs, this will point all of those weapons wherever your nose is pointing. Then they will hold on that location while you maneuver your plane around. This is almost a 100% must when using a lightning pod. Then last but not least we have designate a team target. I believe all this does is place a red marker on the location on the ground you pointed on. Yeah it's for ground battles so you can mark tanks from the air. But anyway that wraps up the gargantuan weaponry section for this guide. Uh, from here on out it's just small things uh, they are still very important, but not complex like all the other stuff. First up is toggle gunners. This is just this just flips through your view through the different gunners on your bomber or any plane with just more than a pilot. The next two, two controls are axes for aiming the gunners with a flight stick or a controller, followed by the sensitivity sliders for those two controls. It gives you the option to invert your gunner y-axis uh, for the movement. This is useful depending on uh, how you have your gunner control stick set up. The next up is all the camera controls. Toggle view is just what it says. It will flip through all the camera views you have access to on that aircraft cockpit, third person, gunner, or virtual cockpit, etc. It just depends on the plane. Then that is followed by a list of all the views in the game. I will only mention the ones that might be confusing. Targeting optics view is stuff like the Lightning 2 targeting screen. Optical seeker view is the targeting screen of stuff like the TV guided bombs, like the AGM 65Ds, and stuff like that.
the tracking camera enemy. Uh, that I believe will track whatever enemy you have selected to track. That is a different setting entirely, but this button will track that enemy. Look down and look back are just hotkeys so you don't have to hold down the free look button and check. It will just shoot you straight to the back or down view. Jumping over the y-axis stuff and you arrive at zoom axis air. Yes, there is a zoom axis ground. I personally use the zoom button from the common settings. Uh, that one applies to all of the zooms, not just the air or ground. After that, we have view in battle. I think this is basically what moves your view around while in game. Like I said, I use a HOTUS in VR, so I don't use this at all. So if you don't have VR, you can bind a four-way control to this and you can move your pilot's head. The next few controls are for head movement. These just move the position of your pilot's head. Uh, just some more cockpit stuff. There are some important things in, mis in the miscellaneous section. Uh, but most of it is just quality of life stuff. As such, I will blow through this section and only call out the more important things. Starting off with acrobatic smoke, just toggle the smoke on and off. Open closed cockpit, turns the cockpit light on and off, turns the cockpit sight on and off. Okay, these three options only matter to cockpit players, but these changes, uh, but these change what the displays in the cockpit show. You have a max of three displays in the game, so you have three options here. Like if you have TV bombs and a lightning pod, it will toggle the view between your radar, map, and those optical views. Unfortunately, I'm yet to find if there's a way to operate the guided weapons from only the multifunctional display. Uh, this just changes the zoom of the MFDs in your cockpit. Okay, this option right here, switch the, uh, switch the HMD indication. This bad boy will turn your HMD on permanently no matter what radar mode you have turned on. I really, really don't like this option. It drove me up the wall when the Fox 3 update dropped earlier this year. Normally, I'd like HMD. But the HMD in VR is kind of broken right now, so it's just frustrating. Anyway, moving on. You have the HMD HUD brightness buttons, so that's neat. Turn night vision on and off. I'm just going to skip over these hi this hydroplane one. I'll just skip over all of this aiming and mouse joystick stuff, uh, mostly because aiming is for console controllers and no one should be using the mouse joystick. Trimming is something I will touch, but won't bog you down with. Basically, you set your three trim axes, you trim the plane out to what you want, then you hit the trim button. This will save their position. Once you like the trim you have, you hit Trimmer's Fixation. That will save the trim for that aircraft, so when you come back to the plane, it will be trimmed just how you like it. Then of course there's the Trim Reset button. If you mess up your trim in combat, then don't worry. If you don't fixate the trim, then it will just reset back to your settings after the battle. For the very last section of this video, we have manual engine control. Uh, just some advice, don't touch this section. Uh, you only need to mess with the settings I'll point out to you. Engine controls mode. It always defaults to automatic, so don't worry about it. Toggle engine. This turns the engine on and off. This is nice for putting out fires, uh, as turning off the engine does help a lot. Ignore mixture. Prop pitch. For this, I will tell you what it is, then I'll move on. Uh, starting from early World War II to modern, the pilot can control the angle of attack of the propeller blades on the plane. This is usually only used for when the engine dies. You can flatten the propeller and move 
and, well, remove a lot of wind resistance, allowing you to glide extremely long distances. Now ignore everything except for toggle extinguisher. This little button turns on your fire extinguisher. It is worth noting that the only reason all this extra stuff is here for when you fly your jet is because you are using full real controls. Well, that was all of the aircraft controls for War Thunder. Uh, don't expect me to do any videos for helicopters, tanks, or naval as I don't play those modes. Uh, someday I will get around to doing controls for the common tab up here. Uh, then I may explore all the stuff in the options tab. But for now, if you like the video, please leave a like. Subscribe if you want to see more and hit the bell so you get notified when I post. I will see you all next time. Bye. Oh, subscribe to me.